Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. If you are just joining us, currently FPX as well as VT are tied up one and one. This is the last game that these two teams will play in the LPL regular season for 2018 Spring Split. Neither of them have qualified for playoffs, but they're giving us a good show here today. Frost has already mentioned what FPX need to do in order to pick up a victory before we went to the break, which is make sure they have an easy top lane to play around so they don't get too carried away, put LWX on a leash, and protect Pepper. But for the side of Vici, this is a team that struggled all split. And since they've been unable to qualify for playoffs, they've been constantly subbing out Fire Rain as well as Easy Hoot. Throughout this series though, we know that Fire Rain is sitting backstage in the room practicing and getting ready, but they stuck with Easy Hoon for all three games. They're not going to make any substitutions coming into game three. They want to win. It's the last time that they're going to get to play on the stage for, as Dom was talking about, you know, a couple of months. We start back up in June. They're not making a playoff run, so they don't want to end as the worst team in the LPL, which right now their record is 2 and 16. TOP have the next lowest record at 3 and 16. So that's what they want. They want to tie it up. And a win here could potentially help them out with that. Not only be tied up with TOP, but also they would have taken down a team team that narrowly missed playoffs. And if that's the case, they could have been the team that just narrowly missed playoffs, but it's not the case for Vici this split. Is Easy Hoon really the mid laner that they should be looking towards? Because we've seen Fire Rain, we've seen Easy Hoon, and they've had some success with Fire Rain in the mid lane, but they're still sticking to Easy Hoon, so it seems like that's the player they want to go towards. But he hasn't had the best of splits. Uh, he's been fairly weak, uh, is probably the nicest way to say it. And a lot of it is because Easy Hoon's style doesn't fit what Vici require him to do. Thing is, is if you're going to build a team around Easy Hoon, then you need to get a superstar somewhere else on the roster because he's not going to be that. He's an excellent supporting cast member, but he's not the main actor, which is why they picked up Swift. But Easy Hoon Swift, you know, they joined mid split. Maybe the synergy wasn't there. It's starting to turn up. Yeah. But week 10, last day, a little bit late. Yep. Seems like they tried to build around Swift and it's as we haven't seen Vici build around a jungler properly just yet. It's been quite some time since they've been able to find but that. But when you have Dandy, Bengi, and Swift, exactly. and you get relegated from the LPL, I have a couple of questions. Which is why I'm saying they haven't been able to build around their jungler, because they've had these three players come and go throughout the roster. Now Swift's here, but they haven't been able to find success with these junglers. Is the, is the problem coming with that jungle position, or Vici just not be able to build around those jungles? I, I think the problem is pretty systematic with Vici. They've uh, repeatedly failed over multiple splits. The hope is that this is the roster that they stick with, um, that they're going to invest and develop this talent, because I think Swift can be the answer, but it's because Easy Hoon is changing. Well, we're about to get into game number three, so I just want to ask you before we get into that match, who do we look towards for Vici? If they have one, if they have one player who carries this match, who is it going to be? Swift. Is that Swift? Oh, well, Swift, that's who we always look towards Vici. That's why I always ask that question. Let's send it over to our cast and take it away for game three. Thank you so much. And Swift, huh? The jungler. He got his Nidalee in game one. And no coincidence, they did win that game one. Oh, yeah. When you take Swift completely out of game two, however, we do see what happens <laughs> well, to Vici. Because yeah. he was completely tracked by Pepper. And uh, I do agree there's a lot of systematic issues with Vici right now. But I just want to see them play with a bit more fire. If you look at the past two games, they've never been the one initiating any fights. And if you want a statistic, if you if you only counter initiate, your win percentage is about 12% for a team fight. That's uh, something that's been uh, accumulated by our stat members at PentaQ. If you go on the one, uh, if you're the one starting the fight, you're usually the one winning it. Mm. Well, I'm not sure if that's an LPL specific stat or a playstyle stat for our league. As Swain is first picked up by Vici, who find themselves on blue side, but. You always have to wonder about this Vici team because historically they have been death by a thousand paper cuts. Yes. They have been the most Korean style, LCK style slow macro. They don't play to make the enemies make mistakes. They play to not make mistakes themselves, which is almost antithetical to the LPL. Even in this series, you can see FPX played poorly game one, they lost. They played stable game two, they won. Do you really credit Vici that much for their wins? I, I don't think so. So I, I really want to see Vici just Try to show more initiative, try to hone in on a strategy, be the one that's going aggressive, because otherwise you're just standing there and waiting for the enemy team to finish you off. Mm -hmm. We've heard Cool in the uh, uh, ooh, in the mic chest saying that if you don't initiate, you're just giving chances to the enemy team. Now we do have the Kaisa locked in, I heard that, ooh. And we've seen so much Kaisa today, it has been great. Yep, and now and it's going to be locked in. This is my fourth Kaisa game to cast today. <laughs> you must be Excellent. pretty happy. I, I am having a great time. Look, I am a veritable font of knowledge on this champion. 
Okay. I, know, I know all the things. Okay, I'm going to have you dropping some of that knowledge when we <laughs> jump into game. I will, I will <laughs> certainly attempt to. But we've got the Trundle Kaizo, which is a pretty good combination. Thresh is the answer, though, as Snow and Caveman looking to take something a little bit safer in this game three so far. We'll see if that's going to be the Tristana lock, though. You don't really need the Tristana now. I would actually prefer the Skarner just for the, uh, the entire CC chain, the roller coaster that you can have. Tristana actually isn't, traditionally speaking, one of Snow's strong champion. It has been the Caitlyn and the Jin, So this is, uh, this is a bo bit more uh, like him. I really didn't understand the Tristana Hoover. Probably just a misdirection there. Mm. And we do see the Trundle, most likely for the jungle. And could still, could, could still be the top lane, but most likely for the jungle and the Kai'Sa for FBX. That is a bold statement, Mr. Clement. <laughs> that is bold indeed. Braum locked in for Crisp in the bottom lane. You could be right. It's possible. <laughs> it could likely. go to cool in the mid lane. I don't Most know. Likely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we've gotten the Zac ban away for Swift right now. Swift is actually ending up on the bottom half of the picks for Vici along with Easy Hoon, assuming that Swain goes back to me on the top lane. The question really becomes what does he run into the Trundle? Because Trundle is incredibly powerful as an early mid game champion. There is no champion that can really beat him out in a duel. So, what you want to see is either a better team fighting tank or something that can gank lanes repeatedly. You have to have a different style than the Trundle. You can't butt heads with him. Mm -hmm. We'll see what that's going to be. We know Swift has got many styles. Though his favorite is to butt heads with the enemy jungler. Though that's that not going to be an option in this game, as you just mentioned. Talia banned away from cool. Let's see if they save that counter pick for Gimgoon or if they save it for Cool instead. The more I think about it, I really like the Thresh reaction to it, the Kai'Sa, just because he has a lot of short CC cooldowns. When Kai'Sa does come into the back line, you can still kind of uh, mm -hmm. uh, take her out of the game instantly. The box is also a great way to keep her locked down. Her Void Rush is still a dash. Ooh, Gangplank picked up by Gimgoon. Oh, Meow wow. calls it. Yeah, this is like a teaching. This is a teaching lesson for him. You know, you, you played the matchup the first game. I'm gonna do it here you in the third. You reckon he takes uh, uh, teacher Fiora, head uh, headmistress oh, Fiora, oh, or whatever he could, it is. He could. Yeah, he's gonna give him <laughs> a spanking. You know, you're you're <laughs> staying here after school, man. <laughs> and Lee Sin is the pickup for Swift in the jungle. An old legacy pick for the jungler of Vici. We've seen Flawless make absolute waves with the champion. Can Swift have a similar performance as Orianna is the answer for Cool? And it looks like that Kai'Sa is going down into the bottom lane. Yep, and uh, we have very different compositions coming out from each side. This is going to be the last game for them so far, so a lot of experimentation. I'm really excited for the top lane matchup, especially Meow had showcased a lot of good play on Fiora before he was, uh, you know, kind of sidelined for long on the roster. Mm -hmm. And also Swift on Lee Sin. This is going to be a treat. Now, Lee Sin, even though it's a champion that likes to butt heads with other people, it's also a champion with a lot of mobility. And he's one of the champions that can get away from Trundle, even when he throws his uh, pillar down. Yeah. Very easy to ward hop. Well, not as easy as it used to be, but certainly still something that we could see as the coaches shake hands for the final time of the 2018 Spring Split. This is the last game. It's all on the line here for these two teams. They've been, as we already heard from the analyst desk, they've already been eliminated from playoffs. There's no chance that they can affect the standings whatsoever. This is for the players. This is for the teams. This is for the fans. Yep, How will they show pride. up in this final game? This is for not being the bottom team of the LPL. Oh, and Pepper with a laugh and a smile. After how he looked in the beginning of game two, it's good to see him picking up a more positive mentality coming into this. Definitely. He's on a very good pick. This is a pick that you can't bully people with. There's nobody that can go up against the Trundle in the early game, not even the Olaf. Mm -hmm. That's why we see him being run as a counter so often. We'll see how his execution is getting into this final game because his opponent is none other than Swift. At a time, one of the best junglers in the LPL, originally making his entrance into the league with Doinby on the Chaogu Reapers, but that was a long time ago. Now he finds himself next to a world champion on Easy Hoon, and my, how the times have changed. But that said, the more they change, the more they stay the same. We are loading onto the rift here. It's Vici versus FPX. Game three starts now.
the LWX fans still cheering along as ever as he's now taking this Kaisa here. Nice deep yawn. Make sure that he's, uh, he's in a pretty good mood, especially riding that game two momentum. Yep, but he is on a champion that, uh, even though it doesn't have a gap closer, I would say is still fairly dangerous mm -hmm. for LWX. It fits his shotgun style, and uh, with that killer instincts, you can go straight to the back on back what, line and what, try to. What was it we just heard pellets. from the analyst desk? Put, uh, make sure Pepper is safe. Here, I've got it written down. Uh, give FPX easy top lane. Protect Pepper and put LWX on a leash. <laughs> well, they did two out of the three. <laughs> what <laughs> more could you ask? Mathematically, <laughs> yeah. They're right there, just not quite. Oh, as Meow already trading with Gimgoon hits a vital, but bone plating will absorb some of that damage. I really don't see Killer Instincts as being a gap closer, so that's probably okay. Like, you only get one use of it in a team fight. Mm -hmm. it, it is pretty long cooldown. Well, this you, is interesting. You look so Lucto confused. Manson. Why do you look so confused? What? We just, I, you're, you're frowning and squinting at the screen right here. They were showing the uh, the gold tallies for both of the top lanes, and uh -huh. it was a kleptomancy battle <laughs> to see <laughs> who, who could get the steal more, more gold. Who actually blocking and getting both vitals there? Meow, getting a pretty good trade, taking that soaring sword, not the headmistress. Sad, sad face. Yeah, it was a really fun, uh, re really fun tally in the top lane right there. Uh, uh -huh. Actually, only kleptomancy for the Gimgoon. Oh, auto attacks. Going to be trading onto Caveman, who steps forward with that flay. But when it's all said and done, level two picked up by the bottom lane of Vici first. So perhaps this could be Snow trying to put LWX behind early on and prevent that from happening. Ella Swift, already topside, full health, double buffs. Yep, strong level three gank coming in. This is at least going to burn a flash from Gingu. That's the barrel. He places another behind him. The wave is pushing in. He's spotted now, repost. Not going to do too much. Slow and a sonic wave just for damage. Great play by Gimkun. Actually catching Meow as he was dashing in. Able to explode the barrel mid-air and then slow down the Fiora. And that means that top lane is safe for at least a little while longer. Pepper gets to push in and invade. As Cool has got to now back away from Swift, paths around the it's Visions of Empire. Caveman is there, the flame misses, Cool flashes, the command attack, and Otto trades it. First blood to FBX, but it's a one for one so far. They chase onto Swift. He's trying Go to get Otto. out of there. All it takes is one, but nobody can get in range. Frozen Domain as he continues to chase the slow. Does he he dashes pillar? out. Pillar not quite ready. There it is. They're going to catch up to Swift. He's stunned. The kill is passed over to LWX. Two kills to one, FPX. Yep, even though Vici do have the earlier roam, they don't land all of their skill shots necessary. And then FPX are able to chase in and finish off most of the kills right there. So, you know, I, I think it was a good idea on Vici's side. You can really see Swift's idea of picking the Lee Sin into the trundle. He's going to gank you heavily. Mm -hmm. He's going to always be there first in terms of the ganking power. But... In terms of raw stats, the Trundle is always going to win out. If yeah. you let Trundle finish the fight, he's finishing it with a victory. Absolutely. At least that time, once he's able to get the long frozen domain and, of course, the cooldown on that Pillar of Ice to finally catch up and pick up that kill. The worst thing, too, for Vici is that the kill ended up onto LWX's Kai'Sa. As, whoa! That's a flash. You can channel Hex Flash while Dark oh, Passaging? What? That is the coolest! Caveman, you clever, clever man. Oh, wow, that was amazing to watch. Actually, the first time I've seen that uh, directly being played in the LPL. Yeah. Still, though, uh, FPX, they back up their bottom lane. They don't let themselves get caught off by this new and fascinating strategy. That is so awesome. Yeah. If you could, wait, you. I guess because Dark Passage isn't technically a channel or a spell activation, and it sits out for such a long duration. So you Dark Passage, then Hex Flash. And then as you channel the Hex Flash, they have to get the travel time right. That uh -huh. is cool. Yeah, that's very cool, man. It's the first time I've seen that. Like, great innovation coming out from Mizihoon. That's a Hex about? Flash. Hook right into cool. Well, no, that's cool in the mid lane. Good play as they try to mob on the caveman. One, two, three. He's stunned. Dark Passage again gets Swift into the fight. He's doing a lot of AoE damage, and so too is Mizihoon. This is Good anticipation from Pepper and Crisp at the same time. The, all these two ganks, Vici has been the one to get to the punch first. They are there, they want the ganks, but Trundle and Chris coming in really changes the dynamic of the game. Vici, they can go for the catches, but they can't go for the extended fights. 
that's where we start to see FPX stand up just a little bit more. Swift is now headed towards the top lane. Again, ganking nonstop. Gimgoon, he's got one Ruby Crystal and that Sapphire Crystal. He is keeping the wave in a very good position for himself, a very safe position. Making sure there's as little chance as possible of him being dived. Now the Grand Challenge is ready. Gimgoon just takes over to level 6 and is able to sidestep that lunge. So absorbing just a little bit of damage, preventing him to be safe. Swift is wasting a lot of time up here. And look at Pepper on the other side. He's looking for a gank bottom. This is a very difficult gank in the top lane. Snow steps up, Frozen Domain, Dark Passage, and the Cannon Barrage. It's used offensively. Now that means Gimgoon is safe to dive as there's no Cannon Barrage. Teleport from Easy Hoon to get in. It's Swift who starts things off. And the Ignite, the auto attack, it's not enough. Nevermove no. pulls him in. Good attempt. But finally, Vici will be able to pick up the kill. Yeah, Gimgoon really out of sync with his teammates right there. Drops a Cannon Barrage, I would say, a, a bit fruitlessly in the bot lane. And actually, that is what signs his death warrant in the top lane as mm. well. So Vici looking at Game Plank, you know, hey. No ult, we can just go on him straight away. I feel like if he had it all, his ult up, it would actually just have been fine. Yeah, that's that's the team trust fall. I see Trundle is ganking bottom. I don't know where the Lee Sin is. I have to guess that he is in the jungle or ganking somewhere else on the map. Tragically, that guess did not work out for him this time. And you can already see the CS difference. Look at that. Swift is forced to farm mid lane while Easy Hoon is recalling. He's 20 CS down, and Pepper and Cool are right there stealing his Raptor camp. Level 6 to level 4. And they're just going to try and get that uh, Kai'Sa in the bot lane extremely fed. There's no way that Swift can go back towards the bot lane. His jungle, he has to assume it's been completely warded out. So you can see what he's doing right now. His only option is to still go top again and again. They have to have all their marbles into Meow. Mm -hmm. And we do have to commend Swift for realizing this. He is still a very intelligent player, even if he finds himself with a low, rate, low win rate in the LPL on Vici. But now... Pepper shows himself in the bottom lane. He's got the subjugate. It's a cannon wave. The target is Caveman initially. He's stunned, but a good hook. Hits onto LWX. Pepper, subjugate heals up, and he's able to back out of there. LWX lands another stun. Doesn't have level six, so no killer instinct to chase, but here no comes Cool. He's trying to clear out this minion wave. Finally, it's four members going over the top of it. Shockwave, and Cool slams Jin to the ground. Yep, that was a 30-second dive and not particularly well executed, but still, for Vici Gaming, there's absolutely no response. Now, they do need to look for something in the top lane. They can't just let two kills in the tower go. Swift will show himself at the Krugs, but Gimgun is so far back. He's not making the same mistake twice. And look at that. They're even going to give solo turret gold over to LWX on this Kai'Sa. One, zero, and two. Another two kills on to Pepper and another kill on Cool. It's FPX very heavily indexing on their middle and bottom half of the map. Yeah, and this is just Gimgoon, you know, reading his Korean counterpart like a book. He knows that his only option is to go towards him in the top lane. He just doesn't show himself. Like, he's saying, telling Meow, you can hold the wave. You can do whatever you want. I'm not stepping into this lane. He is, of course, a gangplank, so he doesn't have to worry about it too much as he can get a lot of gold back. He's Kleptomancy gangplank, too. So. And for Meow, he is taking press the attack, so he does need to leverage that extra damage in the early game, or else Kleptomancy is simply a better build. It gets you your late game items faster. And this is where we have to contrast the choice between Vici and FPX. Swift taking a ganking style, trying to open up the map. But currently, LWX is starting to get big. Cool is starting to get big. Pepper is starting to get big. The only lane he can go to is Meow on that top half of the map, but... Gimgoon is playing so safe. There's there's really nothing Swift can do. And we were just commending him for being an intelligent player with Vici, but it's it's going to have to take something genius to try to open up this early game back in Vici's favor. And Gangplank is still 200 gold above the Fiora. Yeah. So even that investment in the top lane is not paying up for Vici. They're falling very, very far behind. LWX a full 1,300 gold ahead. That's a full BF sword if he so chooses Swift. Don't you dare. Don't you possibly dare. Okay. Oh, he still goes in. No, Swift, what are you doing? He's actually trying Here's to force the flight. All right. Easy Hoon will pin Chris back against the wall and the Visions of Empire. Teleport coming in from Meow. Is it going to be completed? Canceled at the last second and matched by Gimgoon. Double cancels there. Easy Hoon not able to corral the rest of FPX toward the right side of the map. Uh, good play, good attempt from Vici, but ultimately isn't enough power really from their bot lane to hold that play down. And still, we're seeing Vici react to FPX's plays. They aren't being the proactive team in this series, and it's costing them. They tried to turn that fight around, but 
They just weren't able to make it there in time. Did not have enough damage to assassinate, or sorry, to kill Crisp, despite him being caught out of position. Now that those teleports are off cooldown, these lanes are going to become a little bit more volatile. Pepper's actually roaming up towards this top half of the map, spotted out by a ward. They're going to try to trade and chomp down on Meow's CS score. He's not going to be able to pick up a lot of this big minion wave if the bot lane is there to pressure the turret at the same time. Oh, look at the combo. Wow. The Pillar of Filth actually applies Pasma if you displace. Ooh, the final bolt is not enough. Yeah, if you actually displace someone, yeah. it consider, it's considered hard CC. So you just have to place it directly under the Fiora. And from it's outside great of trundle usage. Yeah. Now, we've been seeing this quite a lot. It works with the uh, the Swain passive Ravenous as well. We'll pull someone back if you hit them with the, uh, with the pillar. Move. Yeah. And LWX trying to trade turrets here with Vici. And should be able to. There he goes. Looks like it... I believe that's actually the Gwinsu's first. Yeah, with aren't the you the uh, Fountain of I, Knowledge? I, I should be, yeah, yeah. So he's got the recurve bow and a pickaxe, but he also has a dagger. So I'm not entirely sure. Usually you would just get a longsword and try to go for the Q Evolve first, but this is I don't know, LWS. Yeah, this looks like a plasma build to me. Yeah. It's like Gwinsu, uh, Gwinsu Nashers. No Death Stance, though. Ooh, cool. Caught Crisp right there, Visions of Empire. Trying to zone him back in, but Crisp still doesn't show himself. And of course, the plasma build very strong on Kaisa because of her uh, passive, that second skin. Yep, uh, it really does have no internal cooldown. 20% execute as well. And now, five members, nearly four members. Shockwave on the easy, who needs pulled back into the mid lane. The wave pushes up. And they're going to get some chip damage. They already took the Rift Herald earlier. I didn't even see when that happened. A big charge onto the turret. And Dancing Grenade does a bit. Easy Hoon pops the Demonic Ascension and Curtain Call as they're going to try to get a few revenge kills. Heal to get Crisp out of the radius, even flashing away from the Sonic Wave. LWX and FPX are in and out. FPX are exploiting the fact that Vici Gaming, they don't have a lot of way clear on their team composition. If you look at their AD, it's a single target Jin. If you look at Easy Hoon, yeah, he has to go very close to the minion wave to actually do anything. So good leveraging on the weaknesses of Vici's composition and instantly getting a tower for it. Mm -hmm. Now that is the Gwinsu's finished immediately by LWX. Uh, very aggressive build path. But that means that you do get the one of the most expensive core items of the on-hit Kai'Sa out of the way very early on. So while his initial damage might be a little bit low comparatively to a, just a one-item power spike, it does a lot later on. But Pepper is caught up to Snow. Dark Passage. Oh, Pillar attempt to knock him up midair. I, I don't think that really works. I don't think you can knock someone out of a, uh, a, uh, of a Displacement lantern. during displacement uh -huh. cancels the primary displacement. So you can actually just Pillar someone out yes, of which is a why you can play... Uh, Kaisa, for example, uh -huh. out of air. People who are dashing. Because uh -huh. it applies new displacement that overwrites the original. That's pretty amazing. <laughs> um, it's, it's pretty crazy. It's yeah. very infrequent. <laughs> Ma that's why Magical Journey is also very funny, because it's in a straight line and it's very uh -huh. slow. So Trundle like, becomes hilarious, because then you just put a pillar right underneath them and they get knocked out of the wall. It's really good to know. Like More uses of the pillar <laughs> every day. <laughs> the, the more you know, with Dom. <laughs> You can also find fun facts about League of Legends in the uh, bottom of a Snapple cap. It's easy Hoon, ooh, flashes away from the Shockwave. Cool is starting to press forward. It just looks like Vici are slowly losing this game. Oh, Swift able to escape that one, but still the killer instinct. LWX goes in. He's snared on the far side, but they managed to lock down the kill. Caveman is going to be knocked up. Another stun from Concussive Blows and two kills to FPX. And my statement still stands, Clement. Vici just look like they're standing and losing. Yep, F uh, Vici, they have put up no fights. All of these fights really have been FPX being the initiators and just taking whatever they want on the map. Bad reads coming out from Vici, and they're just not able to respond fast enough. But like Vici, uh, FPX right now, they're just playing for catches. They can do so so easily with, uh, with of course, the Trundle Pillar counting as an immobilized. Tier 2, not going to be finished off. Not enough minions. And like you said, FPX, when they're looking for these fights, there's no way for Vici to get out of there. If Caveman is out of position, there is so much onus on him to protect his team from being caught. But look at the wards from FPX. They see everything. They it's know when you're sleeping. They know when you're awake. Ooh, they're basically Santa Claus. So you're exactly right. <laughs> and they're putting coal in Vici's stocking. 
there's not going to be another time for Vici to check their stocking until summer split. Bad, uh, bad Santa from <laughs> FBX, you know, not a very nice guy. It's just the catch potential from FBX is so overwhelming at this point. Vici, they they do have a good setup for maybe something like a 4-1 composition, but with how badly the map has been collapsed, it's almost impossible for, uh, for Meow to actually split push and still have his team in a safe position. So I actually love LWX's build right now. Triple dagger, 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 dagger. And Gwinsu's. Liam O'Brien would be quite happy with that. There goes the plasma shot. Dragon being started off. Pepper steps forward, level nine to level eight. And as for they are grouped and ready. Gimgoon has teleport if he wanted to join the fight. That's the fourth bullet. That's the first round of first. Snow is going to start stacking up to the fourth bullet again. Never move misses. Teleport goes in. Swift tanking. Meow on the side. Dark passage is going to provide vision, but it's picked up. Ooh, Ooh. clever, but not enough. Infernal Dragon picked up by FPX. Yeah, but if Vichy wanted to go in, they needed to start the fight when they had a 5v4 advantage right there, but they were scared off from the left flank. They knew that Mail couldn't go in by himself, and uh, the other members also did not engage from the right side either. So FPX, they, they're able to push the top lane wave in, get the Infernal Drake, and still avoid the pincer at the same time. So. It's just way too much hesitation and not enough action from VG. Mm -hmm. uh, a little less hesitation, a little more action. Could be what VG need, but for now, they need to defend their tier two. The wave crashes in again. Ooh, and will be broken off by a final auto attack. Swift on the side, the kick, he separates cool. He flashes back and shields himself up. The support gets pulled in return. And that will be a one for one support for jungle. Not enough for VG Gaming. They do need to look for more kills. Curtain call. Opens up wide. Killer Instinct over the wall, and that's cool picking up the kill onto Meow as Mystic, or sorry, LWX hops in to help. Sorry, still got WE on the brain. And you can see Pepper right there zoning in the front lines, trying to get that interrupt onto the Jin. Another thing you can use the pillar for is to stop anything coming out from uh, those stationary AD carry ultimates. 18 minutes into the game, this is just snowballing out of control. This is, this is a Kaiser's dream. Runon's finished already. The E Max first is quite impressive. Yeah, so what this build is, and this is my explanation for it, is basically if they can get everyone low with the AoE, he can instantly pop every member on the team. <laughs> the maximum Q. Well, you need to have the Q evolved for that, so you get double bullets. All right, here's the fight again. Swift from the side. He finds Cool. I mean, it's amazing that he does this, but it's not enough. Yeah, Cool still has everything, you know. Still has the shielding from the Seraphs, and they actually trade jungle for support. Um, at this point, Vici, they know they need, still need more to get into the game, and that's just a bit of the greed factor yeah. into them. They have to go forward. They feel like the game is slipping away. But that's just it, though, that they feel that they have to do so much. Swift has to make the hero lease in play, sacrificing himself to kick out the mid laner, and it's still not enough? What on earth is it going to take for Vici to turn this around? Better hero play, I would say. <laughs> but but <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, you're, you're they're right, very, yeah. very far, far behind at this point. Oh, yeah. 8,000 gold now. Next dragon going to be coming up shortly. An, uh, another ocean to provide more sustain to an already very healthy lineup. And Baron's up in 40 seconds to further escalate the issue. You know, I feel like this game is a lot of people picking the champions they want to play on their last game of the LPL. Yeah. If you look at the compositions, they're not, you know, the, you, you don't usually see this in the LPL. They don't make a lot of sense, but it really is about who, in terms of the game, can actually come up with something cohesive. And I feel like FBX has beaten, beaten them to the punch first. They're just going to go super aggressive. They're going to land the pillar onto someone, slow them, and just try to group on and kill them completely. On the other hand, for Vici, I really don't see a game plan for them. Like, what, what are they actually trying to do with these pieces, these compositions? You know, these are champions they like to play, but it, it just doesn't work as a uh, assortment. I mean, look at the gold advantage. 1,600 gold in the top lane, another 1,800 gold advantage for Pepper. Uh, 1,200 gold for Cool, and then another nearly 1,800 for LWX. Everywhere for FPX is straight up ahead of Vici by half an item or more. Perhaps the only exception being Chris as the support. But you're exactly right. Vici, they've got puzzle pieces to five different puzzles. <laughs> yeah, it's a difficult puzzle time for these guys. Oh! Is he pinned against the wall? Yeah, there? that's a six second. He actually is. He's stun. pinned against the wall. <laughs> he has to stand there and wait for it to time out. That has to be the best Trundle skin 
uh, the constable trundle because <laughs> you get the traffic Whoa, pillar. Yeah, slow down yeah. there, kids. It's great yeah. against Scion as well. Like it actually has thematic value when you slow a Scion <laughs> down. It's like <laughs> going too fast. The pillar in front of him. Oh boy, I've always I've always thought it was funny when the uh, Riot Blitzcrank or Riot Graves play into uh, Scion because oh, then yeah. whenever you see him using the ultimate, you just flash in front of it. You're the police. You gotta stop him. <laughs> You know, I, I always thought that uh, Riot, the company, would be like the guys rioting, but apparently they're the Riot police, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, a, yeah. a much more conservative message than, than I hoped for, but... Oh, boy. <laughs> LWX. See, with he other Kaisa players, yeah, with <laughs> other Kaisa players, you can, you, you can tell, right? They yeah. land the first hit, and you're like, okay, he's absolutely not going to go in here. Maybe he'll go in if they land a good engage in the front, like SMLZ, Mystic, that sort of thing. With LWX, you never know. He might just be like, all right, I'm going in. For sure. He's, he's, he's a shotgun. That's it. The way you should play the Kai'Sa, however, like, if you watch LWX, you're never going to get it. But the way you should is <laughs> basically wait for the front line to use all their CC, instantly go into the back line and assassinate people. Oh, and he's found Swift on the side. Shockwave does even more damage as Pepper kill secures the kill. And now it's five versus four. No jungler for Vici, and FPX are in front of the Baron with a Kai'Sa. Yep, FBX should actually just try to start this up. Well said. Yeah, that's, the, that's what they, they should. do. <laughs> they don't need to bait here for any reason. They should just start. <laughs> cool starts firing across. Baron is actually secured at 29 health. Crisp in the front with a knockup as Vici trying to force the fight. But there's the shockwave. This is just, this is just a massacre. Yep, Vici know that they're on the ropes. They're gonna go for a Hail Mary and try to come up with a team fight. Cool, however, wasn't even in the brawl. He was standing on the sidelines and that gave him the perfect shockwave to clean up the entire fight. Now LWX rushes forward to clear out the minion wave. Gimgoon using teleport to split push up top and prepare yet another wave. And while they might not be able to end the game, this is absolutely going to be an inhibitor here. Swift is back up along with Snow. They're stepping back against their Nexus turrets, trying not to lose the game, but at this point, they're 13,000 gold down. Yeah, they only have three members, while FBX still has a complete five. They're going in for another inhibitor tower. There is no defense from VG, actually. There's nothing that they can do against this many raw stats. And the scary thing is, FBX have got a lot of gold to spend. They haven't been back in a while. The hook actually lands on the pepper in the front. LWX Ooh, baits the damage. repost out of Meow, yeah. 3-0 and 8 in the stat line. This is still 8.5. This is the weak version of Kaisa. Yes. But she's still doing work. 60 base AD, 500 attack range, not to mention all the changes to the Q, the W, and the E. She's much more threatening in the late game. We have seen the SKT game for Bay oh, yeah. goes for the back line, instantly gets a triple kill. <laughs> I mean, they, they doubled her close. AP ratio. It was real close. Uh... But yeah, you're absolutely right. This yeah. we're, I feel like we're going to be seeing a lot of Kai'Sa in the playoffs, and I am so excited for all of it. And this is why everyone has been picking Kai'Sa in the last week. It's not because she's currently a very strong champion. It's because they want to show their opponents, hey, when you go into playoffs against us, remember, if you're on the red side, you're going to have to ban this. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, Blade of the Ruined King is the next item on hit percent shred Kai'Sa. As a unique choice, to say the least, but not an unwelcome one. Yeah, incredibly deadly play right there against a team that doesn't isn't running a lot of armor. Uh, we do see Easy Hoon himself, knowing that he is going to be in a frontline champion, picking up a lot of the armor, but the rest of the team, especially the backline, yeah, it's going to be completely shredded. Two inhibitors already down, and a full minute left on this Baron buff, Chris. Going to retrieve another minion wave. There's another one on the way. No banner of command. So it is just a standard Baron push, but Vici, they've already got super minions pushing in through the mid lane. And while Kaisa might not be great at sieging, they find a pick if they find a little bit of damage. It's great at assassinating and picking someone off. A lot of damage threats on FPX as well. Even if Vici Gaming are able to Whoa, take one. Whoa. Swift! All right, we talked about hero plays. That was cool, but cool had the flash. Very good reaction time from Cool, actually. Ever move, pulls him in, Easy Hoon goes golden, knock up, just a bit too soon. There's the dive into the back line, LWX, he's feeling it. That's one kill, that's two kill, three kills make it four, how about five? That good enough for you? Five kills is my final offer, Clement. 
because they're turning on to the Nexus. FPX have done it. They have finished the series, and they take the win over Vici Gaming. And they finish it with style. A final fight and also a bunch of Zanyas burned at the last second for them. But FBX, they can be glad about their victory over VG Gaming. They don't have a lot of victories, but it has been looking on the upward trend with Cool so far. In the past six matches, they have won four of them. They are looking to make a playoff run in summer. Yes, they certainly are. Already you can see them getting up. Some pats on the shoulders as they make their way over the players. Shaking hands, Vici looking defeated after their split. Two and 17, two series wins over a 10 week season. I imagine this was a bit of a fun game for Vici as well. A lot of unorthodox picks coming from them. But we do have to touch upon the weaknesses that we see from the current Vici roster. They aren't the ones to ever take the first move. And that's why sometimes I feel like they're better with Long, the tank player on their team. Mm. And that's where we have to look for the growth of Vici. This is a large organization that has been in the LPL for a very long time, getting disqualified and requalifying just in time for the uh, uh, franchising. Yep. And we know they're going to be coming back. Question is, what roster do they bring? Do, if they bring the same five players, what changes do they make so that we don't have another 2-17 and 17 split on our hands? Definitely looking for, uh, I feel like the mid lane is a big one. Crosscurrent has mentioned this <laughs> multiple times. Uh -huh. Easy Hoon, he's a bit stuck in season five, much slower player to play. And cool here with a thumbs up. Big thumbs up. Gotta he knows love he's it. done work on this roster. Yeah, comes in week seven, week eight, towards the end of the split to try and revitalize the roster. Does a remarkable job in turning them around, but it's just not quite enough and they are snuck out of playoffs at the last possible second, 9 and 10. Yeah, they actually tie the series score with WE. However, the uh, the win-loss plus minuses does go into WE's favor. So FPX, they were literally one series away from clinching a playoff spot, or a couple of, uh, a couple of wins away, actually, yeah. yeah. All it took was just a few more wins. That that close, the team came. Cool on the lineup, trying to get themselves over the line at the end, but they just couldn't do it. Couldn't uh, do it. Not, but a bit, I, bit of a tragedy. Still, it's good performance from them. We're going to be seeing more of them in the summer split. But for now, though, it's up to our analysts to break down what exactly happened in that series. Thank you, Delman. What happened in that series is all three of Frost and How Do FPX Win a Match came true. They got the Gangplank in the top lane. They got a lot of support to make sure that LOX was on a leash. It was a long leash, Ross, because one of those measuring tape style leashes. The one where, where could, the dog's like yep, running, he's like, oh! Yep, you can go as far as he wants, and you can stop it at any time. And LWX was on a shotgun champion, unlocking Pepper as well. Yeah, and that's the thing. It's the fact that you had the Orion into the Swain, so Cool had the, the pushing priority. A skirmish heavy jungler in Trundle. He wanted to invade, he wanted to uh, catch out the enemy and punish him, and then the Gangplank. Now, the question is, though. Do FPX realize what the win conditions are, or do they just happenstance into these types of compositions and it all comes true? I don't know, you tell me. Did, did it look like I they realized what the win <laughs> conditions were in that match, or did it just happen for them? See, I actually err on the side of no. That, because the thing is, is usually with these types of teams where you do have a lot of vocal members, again, uh, my experience comes from a coach, and when a coach is standing behind a team and drafting with them, you'll see this all the time, too, when you watch the coaches on stage, that they'll be talking to the players, and the players will give them a lot of feedback. Uh, I, it's very rare in an instance where a coach is standing behind a team, and it's like, you will play this no matter what, and if you don't play this, I'm taking off the belt. Usually it's a back and forth or a dialogue, like, we, this is what we need, this is what I would like us to play, and then the coach, or the player then comes back and says, you know, I'm actually feeling this pick right now, this champion would do really well. We know that they're going to pick this. And I have a feeling for FPX, it's more on that side. I mean, throw back to SMLZ's first game on Kaiser, where he literally <laughs> turns to Stake and says, can I can I play this? This this fine? And he says, okay, sure. And he wins the game with the champion. Uh, but L uh, FPX were able to win that match. You know, they got the, the success, uh, the, they got the key points for success. Yep. And were able to use it quite effectively to take down Vici. Something Dom said during the cast resonates with me, which was the fact that Vici kind of just lost. They never really made those practice plays to get back at the match, never really made any attempts to make picks or to go for objectives. They just lost the match and kept bleeding out against FPX. Swift, again, was the person we looked towards. He got a couple of kicks to try and start a team fight. He tried to go for that late game sneaky play, but both times didn't work out. And again, it can't always be all eyes on Swift. Eventually, someone else from VG has to stand up. But it, it almost has to be. And this is also then a byproduct of Vici's draft. Yes, Swift is a phenomenal Lee Sin player, but Vici cannot play Lee Sin. Vici cannot play Nidalee. They need to have a Sejuani. They need to have a Jarvan. They need to have this giant go button that 
forces proactivity on them and has the late game scaling potential to kind of cover all bases. So while Swift is a phenomenal assassin, dueling, quick tempo jungler, it's not in uh, Vici's wheelhouse. They cannot do it and he needs to change accordingly. Right. And although Vici only pick up two wins during the split split of the LPL, you have to remember this is a team that came from the LSPL, requalified back into the LPL and still able to put up a great show in their final match. So hats off to them. But it was Pepper who once again picked up the MVP for FPX. He was unlocked. They allowed him to run loose in the trundle, 5 and 11 supported LWX fantastically and picked up the game. And we've been talking a lot about the new talent coming into the LPL and just how exciting it means for the future of the LPL and Pepper is one of those guys that you need to keep your eyes on, especially in tandem with Cool. Who he actually reminds me of is old school Loveling and when FPX are firing on all cylinders, when Cool has control of the mid lane and he's puppeteering the rest of the map, Pepper is usually his uh, right hand man who's leading the charge making these aggressive plays. He's effectively the sword for Cool. And it's good to see Pepper coming back to form because he was really good at the start of the spring, so it fell it was off the cross RNG. conference. It was good on RNG as well, but then now during after cross conference, didn't look too good, and FPX just barely didn't make playoffs. And I want to ask the question that we were talking about when we started Spring Split, which was FPX. When we talked about them at the start of Spring Split, they were the real deal. This was the team that was meant to be what Rogue Warriors are right now. Yep. We compared Pepper to the likes of the form that Flawless currently has. We compared the rest of the team to what Rogue Warriors' success has looked like this split. What happened to them, and is that what we're going to be looking towards them improving, moving into the summer split? The LPL's favorite word, consistency. That was the issue with FPX. They just didn't have the consistency to be the top team, to make the playoff position, and all it means is that time. They just need to bake a little bit more. They're, just, they're unfinished cookies. They're a little bit soft inside, a little bit too chewy. Give them enough time in the oven, they will be a delicious cookie. But I've got plenty of time. We'll see them again in the summer, so that was their final match in the group stages of the LPL. But we have our our undercards done. The two matches that we saw today are over and now the main the event is about event. to start. <laughs> the final match in the LPL group stage as well as the only match today that will actually decide where two teams will place. On top of that, we've got a familiar face coming back for this match. It's going to be EDG taking on Billy Billy Game. We're going to go to a quick break back of that match in just a bit.